Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, I know that I'm taking a lot of underdogs on this fight card taking place in Brooklyn this weekend. Right? I like Hassan and Jacob's chances. Right? I've made videos on that. Pablo Cano, I like his chances too. I think these guys are underrated. I think they both represent value. I would straddle it in the manner in which I discussed in the videos that are online. But I think they're live underdogs. I think Eric Morales, if in fact he's in shape, right, will give Danny Garcia all he can handle. Well, let's talk about this Devin Alexander fight and understand this Barclays card, the Brooklyn card, this weekend is one of the best cards to come along in quite some time, right? All of these fights, the fights that will be televised on Showtime, are all highly competitive. Now let's talk about Devin Alexander, a southpaw, against Randall Bailey. If you look at the fourth round of Devin Alexander against Lucas Mathise, right, you're going to see Mathise drop Alexander with the right hand. Then you're going to see Mathise actually narrowly miss some home run right hands. You're going to see Devin Alexander there for the taking. Right? Now, many believe that Lucas Mathis got robbed in that fight. Well, understand, that's not the only fight Devin Alexander has had problems with of late. The Juan Urango fight, we remember it for the big knockout. But look at the judges' scorecards. Devin Alexander was in a hotly contested fight against Juan Urango until that knockout took place. Devin Alexander against Timothy Bradley. He actually lost that fight. Right? And keep in mind how that fight ended. There's a headbutt. Devin Alexander looking like his eyes are okay. I understand you might see stars and more might be going on than appearances. But Devin Alexander decided to pull the plug on that fight, to have that fight go to the scorecards. And when it did, he lost on all three judges' scorecards. Now, Devin Alexander did have a lopsided win over Marcus Maidana. But Marcus Maidana doesn't throw straight punches. He throws looping punches. Well, let's get back to the Lucas Mathis fight. Understand Devin Alexander's inability to completely defense Lucas Mathis's right hand is noteworthy because Lucas Mathis, or Mathise, has a higher KO ratio than Randall Bailey. Right? He's a home run hitter. His right hand is a major part of his arsenal. And yet, even in that fight against the guy with a huge punch, one of the hardest punches in boxing, Devin Alexander looked vulnerable to a straight right hand. You know what they say about southpaws. The way to beat them is with straight right hands. Now here we have Randall Bailey. Randall Bailey's home run punch is a straight right hand. Understand, too, that Lucas Mathis ran out of time against Devin Alexander because that fight was a 10-round fight. This fight against Randall Bailey is actually a 12-round fight. Six more minutes of misery if you're hurt, tired, and trying to go the distance. And keep in mind, Devin Alexander appeared to run out of gas against Andre Kotelnik, another controversial recent fight that Alexander has had. In my opinion, this fight against Randall Bailey, and keep in mind, Bailey is there for one purpose only, 
That's the land, a straight right hand, send everyone home, get the knockout, right? He has one punch knockout power. And let me just say, he doesn't even have to stop Alexander with one punch. If you have his kind of punching power, if you're just able to slow down Alexander significantly with power shots, if you're able to take away Alexander's balance and speed and turn him into an ordinary fighter, then you've done your job, right? Then he'll be there for the knockout later in the fight, right? So I see this fight as a toss-up. I'm just not convinced that Southpaw Devin Alexander is going to be able to avoid Randall Bailey's straight right hand for all 12 rounds. I know Randall Bailey's 38 years old. I understand Devin Alexander practically pitched a shutout against Marcus Maidana. But Bailey throws much straighter punches than Marcus Maidana. And quite frankly, Alexander's style of defense, where he sometimes doesn't raise his hands, he's just leaning, lends itself to an opponent being able to catch him flush. Keep in mind, there are a couple ways to do it. You know, one is when Alexander doesn't lean back far enough, right? He might be there to get clipped. Another is if you stutter the punch. Right? Fake like you're going to throw the punch. Have Alexander lean back. Then as Alexander comes forward, that's when you hit him. Bailey is a master at camouflaging that straight right hand. And with his kind of power, all I can say is, at a minimum, he has a puncher's chance. If you're a gambler, all I'm saying to you is, you need to find a way to hedge whatever you're betting on this toss-up fight with Randall Bailey by KO. That's a distinct possibility in a fight like this. We all see Devin Alexander's speed. We see his occasional dramatic power, the one Urango fight at the end of it. Right? We know that Alexander, until the Bradley fight, was unbeaten, right? And we say, wow, Alexander is an elite world-class fighter. Well, all I can say is, how many questionable fights do you have to see? Right? The Mathise fight, the Bradley fight, the Kotelnik fight, even the Juan Urango fight. How many of those fights do you have to see? Before you start asking yourself, is this guy that unbeatable? I think Devin Alexander against Randall Bailey is a toss-up. I'll concede that I do not see Bailey winning by decision. But understand, Bailey has won most of his fights by KO. In fact, his record's better than advertised. Take a look at the Saeed Quali fight. You'll see that Quali hit the canvas multiple times before that fight was ruled a no contest. Go back to Bailey's fight against Juan Urango. You're going to see that Bailey actually dropped Juan Urango in that fight. Juan Urango then got off the canvas to come back to beat Bailey. When you see a guy who even in losses or no contest fights is dropping his opponents and in the Quali fight he dropped him in the first two rounds of that fight, right? Then you understand the level of punching power we're talking about. The fact that Bailey also has a pretty good jab when he throws it should tip you off. That while he's probably going to be outboxed by Devin Alexander while they're boxing, right? He's not going to be humiliated in the ring, right? Bailey knows how to prolong a fight to give himself more time to get the knockout. Let me also point out, too, that Bailey's coming off of a knockout of a bigger opponent. 
than Devin Alexander. Let's remember, Devin Alexander, Bailey too, was campaigning for a long time at 140 pounds. Bailey just beat Mike Jones, much bigger physically than Devin Alexander. Now he gets to phase 5'8", Devin Alexander at 147, a weight class that Devin Alexander doesn't have a lot of experience with, right? When you're fighting a puncher like Bailey, all it takes Bailey is just one good shot to change the dynamic of the fight. Since Bailey is the underdog, and since you're getting great odds on Bailey by KO, that needs to be incorporated into whatever betting strategy you have. I view the fight as a toss-up. I think Devin Alexander wins most of the rounds. But I also think there's going to come a time in this fight when his chin is checked. Keep in mind, he's already been down. He was down in the Lucas Mathis fight. So food for thought. Also, let's keep in mind, too, that unlike some of Bailey's recent fights, the Katelnik fight, the um, Maidana fight, this fight is not in St. Louis. It's in Brooklyn. Right? You need to keep that in mind. Devin Alexander has been drawing strength from fighting in front of his hometown fans. He doesn't have that luxury in this fight. I think this fight is a toss-up. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.